Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I just had some bacon with my coffee. Now, one of my biggest pet peeves, my seven-year-old who knows that I do low carb a lot of the time, what he will do, here's his pattern, he will eat his breakfast, which is something with a lot of carbs in it, like, a blue, like this morning he had a blueberry muffin. He'll eat his breakfast and then he'll see me making bacon. Then he wants to eat some of my bacon, even though that's the only thing that I'm able to eat. It's really not cool, but he gets a kick out of it. So, but I did have enough bacon to satisfy me this morning. And so, <laughs> this kid, but this kid is unstoppable. He does not, it, it, it doesn't bother him at all. Uh, and for any of you that have kids, you know that once, once you have kids, everything that was yours is now theirs. So, okay. I wanted to start off with this uh, video clip. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is a lady named Lynette Zhang. She, she has a YouTube channel. And then this is Jim Rogers. Now, just a little history. After the financial crisis, when, I find, when it finally dawned on me that what our government was doing no longer made sense and that we were not living in what is what I had grown up in, once I realized that, which was financial crisis when they did the bailouts, I, I said, well, this is not sustainable. And when I once I made that conclusion, um, I decided that I would uh, start looking at precious metals because I knew at that moment that when your country goes in that direction of bailouts and all of this, that it's going you're headed for collapse of some sort <clears throat> and, and, and it's going to collapse into something that makes sense. Well, I started following a lot of the precious metals guys at the time. Jim Rogers was one of them. This guy just. To give you a brief a little bit of history, this guy started a, I think he started a hedge fund with George Soros back in the day. Um, he does not, I don't think, hold the same uh, philosophies as George Soros, but he, that's how he became a billionaire. But anyway, um, this is Jim Rogers. He was one of the guys I followed. I followed uh, Jim Rickards as well as Peter Schiff. And I, to this day, I think all of those guys know what they're talking about, about precious metals. Now, some of them don't know what they're talking about when it comes to digital assets because that's how I discovered digital assets by first seeing gold and silver and then I started to see you know Bitcoin and all that and started to realize what it represented so here we are well this is an interesting clip with Jim Rogers that I found listen up because propping up failure has never been a good policy for the long run how do you think this will end relative to the U.S. dollar's global standing as the world's reserve currency? Of course it hasn't. It hasn't. Japan's got serious problems. Japan has peaked. Japan is in decline. The population has been declining for 10 years. The debt skyrockets every day. Every day. Uh, no, it's not helping Japan as a nation or as a society. It's not helping the U.S. I mean, we've got a government in Washington and the central bank, they don't care about you, Lynette. They don't care about me. They certainly don't care about my children or young people. You know, they're spending and printing and spending and printing as fast as they can. There's an election in November. Lynette, don't you know there's an election in November? That's all they work about. I mean, everybody asks me, I'm sure you get this question all the time too. Can, can't this go on forever? Do you think it can go on forever? Well, forever is a long time. Of course, they cannot. No, no currency has maintained its position as the world's reserve currency more than a century or two. Nothing in history. There's always something moving on and replacing what, what the past was. America is now the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, and F. That's not a typo. The largest debtor nation in the history of the world. And last month, they added another few trillion trillion with a T. I mean, listen, it's, I, this is not an opinion. Just read the history books and you'll see that every country which has done this has gone into decline, into problems and, and semi-problems. Now, one thing he just said is how they printed just another two or three trillion uh, just last month. 
that is one of the things in my Greg Kidd interview that he said not once but twice. Um, in I can't remember if it, he said it once in the pre-interview and then once in the interview. And that was that Greg Kidd used to work at the Federal, Federal Reserve. And he was making the point that why would you not own something like XRP that has a limited amount because of all that going on? And that's kind of the same premise behind gold and silver. Greg Kidd went on to say that that's not even what XRP was designed for, but it is also, it's still an effective reason to own it. Uh, it's, it imagine uh, owning something like XRP that has only a hundred billion. And on top of that, it has to, it, people have, they need it to use in the payment flows. Well, that's the whole point. I want to see if I can find it. I think that at the beginning, she got a question that was interesting. Let me see if, it, if it's right a here. A new financial system. He's also designed the Rogers International Commodity Index. Tensions are growing between Washington and Beijing as I'm deglobalization. To, I'm not going to be able to find it. I, I, she, at some point at the beginning of this video, she said that she believed that gold would have to be set to like 10,000, I believe is what she said. Okay. Moving along, XRP Crypto will ripple back securitized claims. It has become the first registered securities record keeper transfer agent that disperses token holder payments entirely on a blockchain. Securitized CEO Carlos Domingo said with this, we can basically do instant payouts. Now, um, remember, Securitize is funded. Um, uh, ripple is an investor. I can't remember if it's Ripple or Spring or both or is an investor in Securitize. Well, I was looking around for Securitize, and just in the last day or two, they put out a, an interesting video if you want to understand what they do. It's a short 53 seconds. Watch this. We're making all the world's assets digital. While most of the world has upgraded to digital, private securities are mostly stuck in the past. They're time-consuming to manage, expensive to trade, and often sit idle for years. Globally, that's over $7 trillion a year in locked up value. The solution? Digital securities. They replace the burdensome manual processes of issuing, managing, and trading private securities, making them easier to own, simpler to manage, and faster to trade. By saving issuers and investors time and money, digital securities better capture market opportunities, create more profitable financial products, and drive more efficient capital formation on a global scale. Contact Securitize today to learn more about how digital securities can work for you. You can check them out at securitize.io. thought that was a pretty simple explanatory video. Then uh, Leonidas um, sent me this. Ripple exec gives update on Ripple customers to 350, which I think was 300. But he apparently did, um, Naveen Gupta apparently did, Naveen Gupta who... I call the man that wants to put a dent in the universe. He confirms 350. He was doing an interview with this um, Nish, Nishith, that's the Psy Associates. And here he said, says the pandemic didn't seem to leave Ripple unaffected. With 28 weeks between Ripple's announcement of 300 customers and Naveen's statement, we can estimate that Ripple grew its customer base by approximately 1.8 customers per week with swell 2020 coming up in 19 weeks on october 14th 2020 ripple will have to pick up the pace if it wants to reach 400 customers by then um and then but anyway the point is is that 350 apparently is the number and they ripple has continued to grow even during this terrible situation if you don't know about xrp arcade this is leonidas's website it's got everything that you could ever want to know about xrp and ripple across the top here news blog or uh, this is the uh, talks about his validator xrp markets ripple the ecosystem the xrp community this guy has it all even events that where people from ripple are, are going to be speaking it's xrparcade.com okay um you know i've been talking about greg kidd on here and so i wanted to show for people that have not been around i want to show you a couple of more interesting things about greg kidd here's one of them uh, back, this is September 27, 2018, the, this Securing America's Internet of Value was a coalition that was put together. This, uh, it puts founding members Coil, Hard Yaka, PolySign, RippleWorks, and Ripple at the forefront of the industry's efforts. So you had, and then they had a Greg, this is a PolySign quote from this PolySign CEO, Jack McDonald. 
And then you have down here, you, Greg Kidd says, um, of Hard Yaka said, Hard Yaka welcomes an opportunity to foster dialogue with U.S. policymakers to ensure U.S.-led digital payments efforts will flourish at home and abroad. Um, so just wanted to show you this. And then I found something else you'll find interesting from Greg Kidd. This is from February 26 of 2015. This is his testimony before the Standing Committee on Banking, Trade, and Commerce in the Senate of Canada. I just wanted to read you this part right here. Listen to this. He says, each financial institution that uses Ripple is required to hold a small reserve of XRP to be used as postage stamps on transactions. With each transaction, a portion of XRP is destroyed, typically equating to a tiny fraction of a cent. This imposes a small cost on transactions, yet makes overwhelming the network um, makes overwhelming the network with illicit traffic or a denial of service attack probably prohibitively expensive. In this way, XRP helps secure the network from attack and ensures its resilience and reliability. The other use case for XRP is an optional bridge between currencies. If a bank needs to make a payment for a customer to receive it in another country, the bank may choose to use XRP at a low cost, efficient bridge between the sending and receiving currencies. XRP lowers the reserve requirements for making cross-border payments. However, use of XRP as a bridge is entirely optional. A bank can freely choose to transact only in fiat currencies. Well, this is the banks were so anti-crypto with what was called cryptocurrencies back then. They had to always give that caveat. But that was from back February 2015. Um, Leonidas also brought to our attention um, that Chris Larson is going to be speaking at CB Insights Tech Conference on June 16th. And that is also on the XRPArcade.com. I'm sure we'll get some sound clips from that. And then I got this from Jace Sparks at Creative Jace sent me this. I thought this was interesting. This is an actual website, unnwo.org. Let's take our planet back about the United States. This is the United Nations New World Order Project. It's a global high-level initiative founded in 2008 to advance a new economic paradigm, a new political order, and more broadly, a new world order for humankind, which achieves UN's global goals for sustainable development by 20. 30. This is what, I mean, when you see all this global reset, all this global talk, uh, and you see it, it, it transcends all these different organizations, the UN, the World Bank, the um, IMF, the World Economic Forum. It's, it's all the same language because they're all the same people. And this, this wasn't just um, it wasn't just something that they um, created because of the current events and the pandemic and all that. This has been on their shit. This has been top priority number one. They, here they say since 2008, probably way before that. New World Order. Brian Melancholy, XRP at Mike Honcho underscore 11. Um, David Schwartz was extremely active on, um, on crypto Twitter, uh, I guess, this weekend. And this is an interesting one right here. Um, this if you may remember when Tyler Winkleboss had tweeted out, uh, had taken a shot at Galgatron or something. Um, he said the XRP army is really dumb trolls by tagging SEC enforcement. You're taking the position that Ripple is a security. And so anyway, he was he and Galgatron, I think, had gone round and round. But David Schwartz replied to this like two days ago. He said to, to Tyler Winkleboss, that's quite a leap there. I'd like to hear you flesh out exactly um, how you get from SEC has jurisdiction over market manipulation by a crypto exchange that lit, lists lots of low cap coins, but not XRP to Ripple is a security. So he took a little swipe at, at Winkleboss. And then I am Legion had asked him a question. Are you planning to tokenize Ripple shares? so that we can buy fractions of it at some point. And David Schwartz says Ripple would either have to go public first or holding would have to be limited to qualified investors. I would love to see that happen. It would be incredibly cool, but there are a few mountains that would have to be moved first. I, I think that, that at a minimum, we're going to see some type of scenario when, when Ripple goes public where I don't know if it'll be uh, partial dividends of XRP, so, something similar to what SBI did. But I don't know what the regulatory challenge is that he's these mountains to climb that he's talking about here, though. So, but I'm sure that they're going to attempt to do something like that. 
will be interesting. And David Schwartz was also in this conversation. Um, hi, David. And for those of you that don't know, David Schwartz is the CTO of Ripple, and he's also one of the creators of XRV. Hi, David. The other side keeps telling me, uh, keeps telling me, will never make because of the token velocity problem. Can you pl please explain this? Thanks. I'm heavily invested in XRP. He says, I think that so long as there is no, there are no particular obstacles to doing so, people will want to hold until they are ready to trade the same asset that they can most easily trade. More importantly, if you want uh, to be opportunistic, you'll want to hold the asset people most need. So say you have a bunch of value, that you want to make a profit with. You want to hold some asset other people will need to buy in exchange for a number of other assets so you can opportunistically take the best offer. If XRP settles payments, those that don't hold it will need to, will need to buy to make payments, meaning those who hold it can sell it to them. I think that you can, um, oh, I like this right here. Look at this, it says, thanks for answering so many questions. Would love to hear you on an AMA with digital asset investor like the recent Mr. Kid. Well, I am game for that anytime David Schwartz wants to do it. <laughs> Rich da uh, XRP Crypto Wolf, Rich Dad, Poor Dad author and investment guru Robert Kiyosaki said, I love gold, silver, and Bitcoin, even more as prices drop. He tweeted that he had bought more gold as the price is declining. How, how many are regularly buying gold, silver, and cryptocurrency? Well, I am, folks. I'm, I, I am not going to stop buying any of them. Okay, the Crypto Maniac uh, sent this to me. Um, Dear friend, I've been watching you whisper PolySun. That's right, PolySun. For a year now, I always thought PolySun was marketed as a general custody service. Then I stumbled upon Ethan Beard's presentation. It says XRP custody, not Bitcoin or Ethereum. Only XRP custody, only XRP. And he's talking about this slide right here. Now, I don't believe that they're just, I don't believe they're creating uh, this thing to scale to the trillions of dollars just to hold XRP. They could be, but I doubt it. But that's not the point. The point is that PolySign is going to solve a big portion of the custody issue going on. And it's a very secretive project for a reason. And it's, it's going to play a critical role in this. And that rolls to this. Um, and this is Anders Lundberg makes a very good point. PolySign. You think a guy like this would join any random company? And they're talking about Tim Keeney, he's retired vice chairman of, at BNY Mellon, led an organization of 25,000 people responsible for custodying 25% of global institutional assets. 25%, folks. And, you th and it's not just him from BNY Mellon. We, we covered the other guy from BNY Mellon, okay? We covered it, and he, he was another guy from BNY Mellon. I believe BNY Mellon has been behind all of this from the very beginning. I believe they've been connected with what Ripple is doing from day freaking one. Because remember, BNY Mellon was one of the it was one of the two or three companies that the U.S. government trusted during the financial crisis to help hold the government's hand through it because they were one of the more sustainable banks. It was BNY Mellon, it was BlackRock, and I can't remember who else. I think maybe JP Morgan or, or Citigroup. I can't remember the other. But they've been there from day one. They've been involved, and this is not a coincidence. Anders Lundberg is correct. Okay, Matthew Line, I, we talked about this the other day, I think. The Interwork Alliance was launched last week. Members include R3, Hyperledger, NASDAQ, DTCC, and SDX. Six Digital Exchange, ING, and UBS. Um, and then he's got all of these different partners. that All these names you'll recognize. Anytime you see Hyperledger, you need to be thinking about Ripple, XRP. Um, all of these things are connected. They're, they're all, every, all of this is connected. ING, NASDAQ, R3, um, TokenSoft. Remember, I told you I like Hedera Hashgraph. I like it because it's in the game. IBM's in the game. Stellar's in the game because they're working with IBM. BTP, I don't know these companies. Chainlink, it's all connected, folks. That's, that's the whole point. They're creating all these consortiums so that everything is interconnected. And there's a handful of these companies 
um, and digital assets that are in the game. And the ones that I cover on this channel are in the game. Okay. Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29 sent me this from XRP Scan. It's fascinating to see incoming XRP transaction chart on ODL versus non ODL, or ODL is Coins PH Bit. So versus non ODL Binance exchanges. The transaction spike during five day work week at ODL exchanges tells how popular ODL is with real world remittances. Michelle Vandenberg sent me this one, another interesting tweet. Um, these banks over in Switzerland, they are gearing up to hold these digital assets. They're, they're leading the way. Excuse me, leading the way. Um, I don't even know how to say that bank. A private Swiss bank now offers XRP for trading and custody. The bank believes cryptocurrency can change the financial dimension across the world. Right? I mean, I see stuff like this and I'm like, Really, folks, do, do you really, do, does my son, does my seven need to draw you a picture of a bank and digital assets going in and being held? If that's what we need to do here, look, this is coming. And I, I, I almost, I don't feel sorry because we've been through a lot as holders and we've, we've been through a lot of, <laughs> a lot of all the negative talk and, and all the people that have said this is not going to be anything. Well, it is becoming something when you see banks that are starting to hold this get ready strap in because when at when it when the water becomes safe for average joe out there and he realizes oh you mean i can go to the bank and i can put my dollars in the bank and i can say i want to buy xrp that i can do that and i don't have to worry about having a ledger nano s or holding it myself and these scary keys that i keep hearing about i can just buy it and own it when we get to that place, the opportunity window is closed. All right. Um, Alibaba sent me this. A couple of things just to let you know where this economy, this nasty economy is going. Bank of England alert over 36 billion pounds toxic loans. Says Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey has been alerted that 36 billion pounds of emergency COVID, I don't say that word, loans to small business are at risk of turning toxic could impede any recovery as data this week will will lay bare the damage inflicted on the economy from the coronavirus all right i said it twice i i've been able to go all this time without saying those words and if i have to clip shoot i may just clip that part out of here anyway let's let's try that one more time the bank of england governor andrew Bailey has been alerted that 36 billion pounds of emergency loans to small business are at risk of turning toxic and could impede any, any recovery as data this week will lay bare the damage inflicted on the economy from the thing. All right. And then there was this gold telegraph. Italy's, day, Italy's debt is unsustainable in the long term and will eventually require a restructuring. Schroeder's senior European economist debt to GDP ratio is expected to rise to as high as 159 percent this year. Many countries will need restructuring. You think? I'm glad that these economists are just figuring figuring this out because I know a lot of people on YouTube who figured that figured this out two years ago, or even five and ten years ago. Now this was something that just couldn't be ignored because it, if it, with XRP, the standard productions, um, any time that he makes me laugh out loud, I have to cover it. This is the best of Brad Garlinghouse. I'm just going to scroll down and let you laugh. Um, enjoy our second retrospect of the best of Brad Garling, of Garlinghouse. Ripple mistakenly sends 60 billion XRP to a Twitter scammer. Already saving customers trillions, Ripple sweetens deal with McWinky Burger coupons. Um, Yoshitaka Katao caught returning Brad Garlinghouse's Christmas gift. Um, Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple fleet set sail for Davos. <laughs> Judge Judy to rule on Ripple security case. Garlinghouse moon boots fuel rampant speculation. <laughs> that was when he had those funny shoes on, those boots on when he was in Davos. Brad Garlinghouse makes Swiss CEO apologize to the world on CNN. And then this one was funny. Ripple executive visit, executives visit local kindergartens to explain the benefits of blockchain. <laughs> That made me laugh. The, the, I love the moon boots one because Brad Garlinghouse obviously 
he was, he actually said something about the boots, I believe, on CNN because everybody got a kick out of it. I'm going to finish this with this um, from El Jaboom. Do you agree? I do. Paper money eventually re returns to its intrinsic value, zero, from Voltaire. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. And tell your friends and family, paper money eventually returns to its intrinsic value, zero, because they design it so that they can make as much of it as they want. Thank you for listening.